Background of inquiry. Count Dracula's problem is to get back to his own place. A. He must be brought back by someone. This is evident. For had he power to move himself as he wished, he could go either as man or wolf or bat, or in some other way. He evidently fears discovery or interference in the state of helplessness in which he must be, confined as he is between dawn and sunset in his wooden box. B. How is he to be taken? Here, a process of exclusions may help us. By road? By rail? By water? 1. By road. There are endless difficulties, especially in the inner city. X. There are people. And people are curious and investigate. A hint, a surmise, a doubt as to what might be in the box would destroy him. Why? There are, or there might be, customs and octroi officers to pass. Said, his pursuers might follow. This is his greatest fear. And in order to prevent his being betrayed, he has repelled, so far as he can, even his victim, me. 2. By rail. There is no one in charge of the box. It would have to take its chance of being delayed. And delay would be fatal, with enemies on the track. True, he might escape at night. But... What would he be if left in a strange place with no refuge that he could fly to? This is not what he intends, and he does not mean to risk it. 3. By water. Here is the safest way in one respect, but with most danger in another. On the water, he is powerless except at night. Even then, he can only summon fog and storm, and snow, and his walls. But, were he wrecked, the living water would engulf him helpless, and he would indeed be lost. He could have the vessel drive to land, but if it were unfriendly land, wherein he was not free to move, his position would still be desperate. We know from the record that he was on the water. So what we have to do is to ascertain what water. The first thing is to realize exactly what he has done as yet. We may then get a light on what his later task is to be. Firstly, we must differentiate between what he did in London as part of his general plan of action when he was pressed for moments and had to arrange as best he could. Secondly, we must see, as well as we can surmise it from the facts we know of, what he has done here. After the first, he evidently intended to arrive at Galatz and sent invoice to Varna to deceive us lest we should ascertain his means of exit from England. His immediate and sole purpose, then, was to escape. The proof of this is the letter of instructions sent to Emanuel Hildesheim to clear and take away the box before sunrise. There is also the instruction to Petrov Skinsky. There, we must only guess at but there must have been some letter or message since Skinsky came to Hildesheim. That, so far, his plans were successful we know. That Serena Catherine made a phenomenally quick journey. So much so that Captain Donaldson's suspicions were aroused. But his superstition, united with his cunningness, played the Count's game for him and he ran with his favoring wind through fogs and all, till he brought up blindfolded galats. That the Count's arrangements were well made has been proved. 
Hildesheim cleared the box, took it all, and gave it to Skinsky. Skinsky took it. And here we lose the trail. We only know that the box is somewhere on the water, moving along. The customs and the octroi, if there be any, have been avoided. Now we come to what the Count must have done after his arrival on the land at Galatz. The box was given to Skinsky before sunrise. At sunrise the Count could appear in his own form. Here we ask why Skinsky was chosen at all to aid in the work. In my husband's diary, Skinsky is mentioned as dealing with the Slovaks who trade down the river to the port. And the monks remark that the murder was the work of a Slovak showed the general feeling against his class. The Count wanted isolation. The surmise is this, that in London the Count decided to get back to his castle by water. As the most safe and secret way, he was brought from the castle by Tsgani, and probably they delivered their cargo to Slovaks, who took the boxes to Varna, for there they were shipped for London. Thus, the Count had knowledge of the persons who could arrange this service. When the box was in land, before sunrise or after sunset, he came out from his box, met Skinsky, and instructed him what to do, as to arranging the carriage of the box up some river. When this was done, and he knew that all was in train, he blotted out his traces, as he thought, by murdering his agent. I half examined the map, and find that the river most suitable for the Slovaks to have ascended is either the Pruth or the Sereth. I read in the typescript that in my trance I heard cows low, and water swell and level with my ears, and the creaking of wood. The Count, in his box, then, was on the river, in an open boat, propelled, probably, either by oars or poles, for the banks are near, and it is working against stream. There would be no such sound if floating downstream. Of course, it may not be either the Sereth or the Bruce, but we may possibly investigate further. Now, of these two, the Bruce is the more easily navigated, but the Sereth is at Fundu joined by the Bistritza, which runs up round the Borgo Pass. The loop it makes is manifestly as close to Dracula's castle as can be got by water. When I had done reading, Jonathan took me in his arms and kissed me. The others kept shaking me by both hands, and Dr. Van Helsing said, Our dear Madame Mina is once more our teacher. Her eyes have seen their be their blinded. Now, we are on the track once again, and this time, we may succeed. Our enemy is at his most helpless, and if we can come on him by day, on the water, our task will be over. He has a start, but he is powerless to hasten, as he may not leave his box lest those who carry him may suspect. For them, to suspect would be to prompt them to throw him in the stream where he perish. This he knows and will not. Now, men, to our council of war. For here and now, we must plan what each and all shall do. I shall get a steam lamp and follow him, said Lord Godalming. And I horses to follow on the bank, lest by chance he land, said Lord Godalming.
said Miss Samaras. Good, said the professor. But, good, but neither must go alone. There must be force to overcome force, if need be. The Slovak is strong and rough, and he carries rude arms. All the men smiled, for amongst them they carried a small arsenal, said Mr. Morris. I have brought some Winchesters. They are pretty handy in a crowd, and there may be wolves. The Count, if you remember, took some other precautions. He made some requisitions and others that Mrs. Harker could not quite hear or understand. We must be ready at all points. Dr. Seward said, I think I had better go with Quincy. We have been accustomed to hunt together, and we too, well armed, will be a match for whatever may come along. You must not be alone, Art. It may be necessary to fight the Slovaks, and a chance thrust, for I don't suppose these fellows carry guns, would undo all our plans. There must be no chances this time. We shall not rest until the Count's head and body have been separated, and we are sure that he cannot reincarnate. He looked at Jonathan as he spoke, and Jonathan looked at me. I could see that the poor dear was torn about in his mind. Of course he wanted to be with me, but then the boat service would, most likely, be the one which would destroy the, uh, the vampire. Why did I hesitate to write the word? He was silent a while, and during his silence, Dr. Van Helsing spoke. Friend Jonathan, this is to be for twice reasons. First, because you are young and brave and can fight, and all energies may be needed at the last. And again, that it is your right to destroy him, that which has wrought such woe to you and yours. Be not afraid for Madame Mina. She will be my care, if I may. I am old. My legs are not so quick to run as once, and I am not used to ride so long or to pursue as need be, or to fight with little weapons. But I can be of other service. I can fight in other way, and I can die if need be, as well as younger men. Now, let me say that what I would is this. While you, my lord Godalming, and friend Jonathan, go in your so swift little steamboat up the river, and whilst John and Quincy guard the bank where perchance he might be landed, I will take Madame Mina right into the heart of the enemy's country, whilst the old fox is tied in his box, floating on the running stream, when he cannot escape to land, where he dares not raise the lid of his coffin box, lest his Slovak carriers should in fear leave him to perish, we shall go in the track where Jonathan went, from Bistritz over the Borgo, and find our way to the castle of Dracula. Here, Madame Mina's hypnotic power will surely help, and we shall find 
are they? All dark and unknown otherwise. After the first sunrise, then we are near that fateful place. There is much to be done, and other places to be made sanctify, so that that nest of vipers be obliterated. Here, Jonathan interrupted him hotly. Do you mean to say, Professor Van Helsing, that you would bring Mina in her sad case, and tainted as she is with that devil's illness, right into the jaws of his death trap? Not for the world. Not for heaven or hell. He became almost speechless for a minute, and then went on. Do you know what the place is? Have you seen that awful den of hellish infamy, with the very moonlight alive with grisly shapes, and every speck of dust that whirls in the wind? A devouring monster in embryo. Have you felt the vampire's lips upon your throat? Here he turned to me, and as his eyes lit on my forehead, he threw up his arms with a cry. Oh my God, what have we done to have this terror upon us? And he sunk down on the sofa in a collapse of misery. The professor's voice, as he spoke in clear, sweet tones, which seemed to vibrate in the air, calmed us all. Oh, my friend, it is because I would save Madame Mina from that awful place that I would go. God forbid that I should take her into that place. There is work, wild work, to be done there, that her eyes may not see. We men here, all save Jonathan, have seen with their own eyes what is to be done before that place can be purified. Remember that we are in terrible straits. If the Count escape us this time, and he is strong and subtle and cunning, he may choose to sleep him for a century, and then, in time, our dear one, he took my hand, would come to him to keep him company, and would be as those others that we, Jonathan, saw. We have told us of their gloating lips. We heard their ribald laugh as they clutched the moving bag that the Count threw to them. We shudder and fell it may be. Forgive me that I make you so much pain. But it is necessary. My friend, is it not a dire need for the which I am given, if need be, my life? If it were that anyone went into that place to stay, it is I who would have to go to keep them company. Do as you will, said Jonathan with a sob that shook him all over. We are in the hands of God.